Welcome to the fourth and final lesson of this basic driver safety course. Let's start with a look at some key Indiana traffic laws. There are many laws, and this will just be a brief sample of some of the more important statutes. We'll be looking at laws that cover speeding and driving too slow, tailgating, reckless driving, intersections and crosswalks, school buses and emergency vehicles, and cell phone use while driving. We'll also briefly cover some miscellaneous provisions on headlights, coasting in neutral, and what to do when traffic lights are out. None of the material is presented as, or meant to be considered, legal advice. The goal is to clarify some laws that most of us sort of know without always being clear on the specifics. Before we start, let's clarify what's meant by a Class A, Class B, or Class C misdemeanor. The most severe is Class A, with up to a year in jail and fines as high as $5,000. Class B has a fine up to $1,000 and up to 180 days in jail. Class C is the most common, with up to 60 days in jail and no more than a $500 fine. So let's begin with speed limit laws. Maybe the least understood is what's known as the Basic Speed Limit Law, which can be found in the Indiana statutes under Indiana Code 9-21-5, Section 1, General Restrictions. The Basic Speed Law means that even when you're driving at the posted speed limit, you can still be ticketed for driving too fast. The key phrase in the Basic Speed Law is reasonable and prudent under the conditions. In other words, when the road and weather conditions make the posted speed limit unreasonable or imprudent, you can be cited for breaking this law. Under Section 4, the basic speed law is used as a standard in place of the posted speed when you're approaching an intersection or railroad crossing, nearing and while taking a curve or at the crest of a hill, on narrow or winding roads, and when bad weather bad roads, or the presence of pedestrians are involved. Sections 10 and 11 call for tighter speed law enforcement on bridges or where workers are present. For example, driving too fast when you might endanger people working is a Class B instead of the normal Class C misdemeanor for driving too fast. Did you know that there are also laws against driving too slow? The key words in Section 7 are a slow speed that impedes or blocks the normal and reasonable movement of traffic. This doesn't apply when you're driving slower in response to poor conditions or emergency vehicles. It applies when you interfere with the normal flow of traffic. Remember that when three vehicles are stacked up behind you because of how slowly you're driving on a narrow or one lane road, you have to move over as soon as you can to let them pass. As you know, Indiana also posts minimum speed limits where a slower moving vehicle could create bottlenecks. Slower moving vehicles like tractors and mopeds are prohibited where speeds of 40 miles per hour or greater are posted. Additionally, on our multi-lane highways, a vehicle that travels at a speed less than the established maximum can be ticketed if they're not in the rightmost lane when traffic is moving normally. Now let's look at tailgating and reckless driving. The key words in this statute are more closely than is reasonable and prudent, taking into account the stopping distance needed for the road conditions and the speed of each vehicle. Tailgating is a serious hazard and the laws against it are being strictly enforced. It could also figure into reckless driving charge one of the interesting things about reckless driving is that you can be charged for driving too slowly or too fast. It can also be reckless to refuse to allow someone to pass you for passing someone on a curve or where visibility is less than 500 feet. Reckless driving is a serious violation. It moves up to Class B if there's property damage or if you pass a school bus with its stop sign displayed and it becomes a Class A misdemeanor if a person is hurt. Laws on intersections and crosswalks are worthy of a quick look too. The law states that a block 
that has crosswalks at both of the closest intersection only gives the right of way to pedestrians when they're in the crosswalks. The exception is visually impaired pedestrians who use a white cane or a trained guide dog. They have the absolute right, the absolute right of way, whether in a crosswalk or crossing against the light. Drivers must always yield the right of way to persons who are visually impaired. Nevertheless, as we discussed in lesson three, never insist on your right of way with a pedestrian. One of the most regularly violated laws governs left turns. The wording of this law, I admit, is very confusing. Section 21A requires that you make the left turn as so as to leave the intersection to the right of the center line of the roadway being entered. What this means is that when you make a left, you're not allowed to cross over the oncoming right lanes of the street that you turn into. Those lazy 45 degree turns are not only dangerous if there's a car in those lanes, they're illegal. The other interesting rule is that when two vehicles arrive at the same intersection at about the same time, the one to the right has the right of way. You can always remember this because the car to the right has the right of way. It's part of driving courtesy, but it's also the law. Let's move on to laws about school zones, school buses, and emergency vehicles. I already mentioned that passing a school bus when the stop iron is up is considered reckless driving, with all the penalties that come along with that charge. As for school zones, those are enforced when children are present. That means if there are kids out and about in any area in the vicinity of the school zone, the signage should give you ample instructions on when the school zone speed limit is enforced. For the sake of our kids, please pay attention to that. But what I really want to talk about is the move over law. It's still new to some people, but it's an important law and we need to honor it. As of July 2015, drivers in Indiana need to make every reasonable effort to move out of the lane closest to the emergency vehicle that stopped alongside a road, especially on an expressway. The language is that if it is impossible or unsafe, you can stay in the lane if you reduce your speed by at least 10 miles per hour below the posted speed limit. It's a Class A misdemeanor if you don't, and the law enforcement is understandably taking this seriously. Another important point, the same law applies to a wide range of service vehicles like tow trucks or highway crew trucks. It's a Class B misdemeanor if you don't honor the move over law for these workers and their vehicles. Let's finish with a brief review with a look at a few miscellaneous laws about headlights, what to do when traffic lights are out, coasting in neutral, and cell phones. Indiana requires the use of headlights if you can't clearly see someone who's 500 feet ahead. 500 feet is also the legal distance for reducing your high beams when there's oncoming traffic. You have to do the same when you're 200 feet or closer behind someone. So what do you do under Indiana law when a traffic light is out due to a blackout or other problems? Indiana Code 9-21-3, Section 7, requires that a traffic light that is completely dark must be treated as a stop sign. In other words, the same rules apply for coming to a stop and right-of-way for a stop sign are used. Obviously, that doesn't include pedestrian hybrid signals that are designed to go dark when there's no pedestrians. There's one other law that people don't always know they're violating. You can't just shift into neutral or depress the clutch and coast down a hill. Maybe it saves a tiny bit of gas, but you need to stay in gear when you're going down the hill under Indiana law. Finally, let's look at one last time at Indiana's law against texting and driving. You can't type, transmit, or read a text when driving, even when stopped at an intersection. Although the law doesn't specifically cover using the handset to make or receive a call, unless it's to call 911, the bottom line is never text and drive, and use a hands-free device whenever making or receiving a call. If you can, pull over and take time or wait until you arrive to call them back. 
This same statute, by the way, protects your privacy. The officer can't take your phone to review your history unless the officer has a warrant or probable cause. That ends our look at laws. We went through these laws fairly quick, and you can look them up for more details. But our goal was simply a review of some key provisions. For those who want a longer look, I'll post a copy of all the laws that we covered next. You can look at them there. After that, we'll take a look at the Habitual Traffic Violator Law.